It's already mid-month, 15th of November 2023. Welcome to Somalia's premier number one station for news and updates, Dalsan TV. I'm your presenter, Abrahman Yusuf. Tonight, we have a lot in store for you, but first, kindly have a look at some of our top stories. Somaliland President reshuffles cabinet. Eight people dead due to flooding in Hiran region. Political tensions heighten in Putland as opposition's group unilaterally announce election timeline. Deputy Prime Minister and aid officials coordinate relief efforts for Baidoa flood victims. Somalia President advocates for two-state solution for Gaza conflict. UK USAID partner to bolster girls' education in Somalia. Glad to have you back. Now let's delve into a full bulletin. At least eight people have died, several others displaced after floods swept over villages at Belidouane in Ra region, central of Somalia. According to local authorities, the floods were caused by River Shabele, which buses bank following a heavy downpour experienced in the area. At least eight people have died, several others displaced after floods swept over villages at Baladwain in Hiran region, central Somalia. According to local authorities, the floods were caused by the river Shabele, which burst its banks following the heavy downpour experienced in the area. Baladwain District Commissioner Omar Osman Alasso said that the floods have affected Koshin, Holwadag, Bundawain and Hawatako neighborhoods, and that the death toll could rise as the water levels continue to increase. The district administration, in collaboration with the federal government and humanitarian agencies, is providing emergency assistance to the displaced people, such as food, water, shelter and health services. He appealed for more support from the international community to help the flood victims, who are facing the risk of waterborne diseases, malnutrition and insecurity. The opposition umbrella in Putland unilaterally announced parliamentary and presidential elections on Tuesday, signaling their commitment to last week's decision. There was a recent call by 28 traditional leaders for local authorities to prepare for an indirect election in which clan leaders will choose legislators. Said Denny disagreed with the idea of selecting president and vice president of the parliament by the legislators. The opposition umbrella in Putland unilaterally announced the parliamentary and presidential elections on Tuesday signaling their commitment to last week's decisions. There was a reason called by 28 traditional leaders for local authorities to prepare an indirect election in which clan leaders will choose legislators. Said Denny disagreed with the idea of electing the president and vice president of the parliament by the legislators. The opposition functions have declared that they have coordinated the election timetable in line with the guidance of the elders, commencing with the parliamentary elections. According to the opposition, the goal of their move is to prevent President Denny from establishing an illegitimate extension period. They also declared that Putland will launch an awareness camp. They also declared that Putland will launch an awareness campaign regarding the selection of lawmakers on the 15th of this month. The Putland Electoral Commission recent announcement of the schedule for one person one vote election. Said Denny declared his intention to allow the electorate to choose their representatives in accordance with the designated election schedule. The opposition's action might intensify the political dispute over the upcoming regional elections. They stress that the election has to take place on January 8, 2024. Deputy Prime Minister Saleh Ahmed Jama of the government of Somalia, accompanied by a team of national and international aid officials, visited the city of Baidoa on Tuesday. The purpose of their visit was to coordinate their efforts and provide support to the victims affected by the recent calamity of floods. كور الحالة دي مثل كان دقنتها مدة دقنتها انت دقنة هيا يا ايدن تاقيرة او حين السيئة حالة دا سوابو Deputy Prime Minister Saleh Ahmed Jama of the Federal Government of Somalia accompanied by a team of national and international aid officials visited the city of Baidoa on Saturday The purpose of the visit was to coordinate relief efforts and provide support to the victims affected by floods calamity تعالين أبارب أن يبي الآن. دتك هل كانت كوركتان؟ ودتك كسو شيء ذي دجان ندا أقص وحصار كبرندلك الصومالي. ودتك بيرلي ده. ودتك 
حل الروابط كسو ساري تري الصومالي انت يا ذاك اللي وحي قورته وحفلة يا ودك كيك اللي يمقص قنص حدارة بور حكبو جودة هان قبل الله دبي يا بكل. By the recent calamity, during their visit, the officials held meeting with the president of the Southwest State, Abdelaziz Laftagaren, to discuss strategies aimed at providing immediate assistance and long-term support to affected population. The discussions focus on assessing the extent of the damage caused by the flash floods and formulating an effective response plan to address the emergency needs of the affected communities. The Deputy Prime Minister, Jama, expressed his gratitude for the assistance provided by the international community and emphasized the importance of strong partnership in addressing the challenges posed by the natural disasters. Musa Bihi Abdi, the President of the Self-Proclaimed Republic of Somaliland, dismissed four cabinet members and appointed replacements and filled vacant positions on Tuesday. Here's a full story. Musa Bihi Abdi, the president of the self-proclaimed Republic of Somaliland, dismissed four cabinet members, appointed replacements, and filled vacant positions on Tuesday. Abdul Khadir Iman Warsama, the Minister of Agriculture, Dr. Abdul Sheikh Abdullahi Sufi Jibril, the Minister of Communication, Abdul Razak Hussein Ali Albani, the Minister of Religion and Endowment, and Abdi Usman Abdullah Dagawena were all dismissed by President Bihi. Ahmed Mohamed Diriya was named Minister of Planning. Abdurizaq Ibrahim Mohamed was named Minister of Investment. Saliban Yusuf Ali Kore was named Minister of Water. Ahmed Yusuf Idris Awale was named Minister of Communications. Ahmed Adan Ahmed Bouhane was named Minister of Education. And Mohamed Haji Adan Ilmi was named Minister of Religion and Endowments. Abdul Nasir Mohamed Hassan Bouni, the spokesman for the ruling Kulmiya Party, was named Minister of Parliamentary Relations and Constitutional Affairs. Saliban Awad Ali Bukhari and Ahmed Mohamed Habane were named Ministers of Roads and Agriculture, respectively, while Rabbi Abdi Mohamed was named Minister of Fisheries by the President. The reshuffle was the largest of its kind since Bihi assumed office six years ago. President Hassan Sheikh Mohamud of the Federal Republic of Somalia has emphasized the urgency of a two-state solution to address the ongoing conflict in Gaza. Speaking against a backdrop of Somalia's own history of political instability and violence, President Mahmoud highlighted the importance of political, dialogue and peaceful negotiations as the only viable means to achieve a lasting resolution. Somalia's President Hassan Sheikh Mohammed has emphasized the urgency of a two-state solution to address the ongoing conflict in Gaza. Speaking against a backdrop of Somalia's own history of political instability and violence, President Mahmoud highlighted the importance of political dialogue and peaceful negotiations as the only viable means to achieve a lasting resolution. The president acknowledged Somalia's own progress towards stability, citing recent diplomatic efforts to strengthen ties with African neighbors and the Arab world. Drawing from this experience, he emphasized that violence between Israel and Hamas, the Palestinian militant group, will not address the root causes of the conflict. Instead, President Mahmoud stressed that a political agreement between the two sides was imperative. The Gaza Strip has endured intense Israeli bombardment over a month in response to cross-border attack launched by Hamas on southern Israel in October. Accepted solutions. Two states, Palestine and Israel, living together side by side peacefully. And it can happen. It's possible. Why not we go ahead with that? The denial of the rights of someone is what makes people to go on the extreme and does everything. So we cannot deal with the consequences. What we deal is the origin of the, of the problem. That's where we, we, we need to address. What are the origin of this problem? The origin of this problem is a whole nation, call it is a, a, a Palestine, existence, living, in a dignified manner as any other the conflict has resulted in significant loss of life and the displacement of a large portion of gaza's population president mahmoud joined the international community in condemning israel's actions highlighting their violation of human rights and the rules of war the president further emphasized the suffering inflicted upon the people of gaza transcends religious arab and regional boundaries emphasizing the universal nature of the humanitarian crisis he expressed concern for lives lost, the suffering endured by mothers and children and the plight of the innocent civilians caught in the conflict. 10,616 Somali adolescent girls and young women graduated today 
for the 11 month now formal education course designed to improve their literacy, numeracy and life leadership skills. The graduation ceremony was hosted by the Ministry of Education, Culture and Higher Education and was presided over by State Minister Honorable Hesse Chama. 10,616 Somali adolescent girl and young women graduated today from an 11-month non-formal education course designed to improve their literacy, numeracy and life leadership skills. The graduation ceremony was hosted by the Ministry of Education, Culture and higher education and was presided over by State Minister Honorable Hirsi Jama. Among the graduates are disabled girls who have become well-known advocates and role models, encouraging their friends and communities to attend school and participate actively. The United States and the United Kingdom provided funding for the course. In Somalia, access to education is still a major barrier, especially for girls and young women, as just 25% of females in elementary school go to school. Girls' access education is further hampered by a number of issues, including gender bias in families, early marriage, and household obligations. Acknowledging this crucial problem, the Adolescent Girls' Education in Somalia program, which is funded in part by the British Embassy in Mogadishu, is filling the gap by enabling more than 80,000 young women and adolescent girls who are not yet enrolled in school to take part in life skills and educational programs. Speaking at the ceremony, State Minister, Office of the Prime Minister said, Education is a cornerstone of Somalia's progress, fostering critical thinking and empowering women for economic development. The UK's Deputy Ambassador Nick Jacks asserted that the girls graduating today are an important reminder of the millions of girls across the country seeking a decent education. Unlocking their talents and skills is crucial to building a safer and stronger Somalia tomorrow. Lovely viewers, that's all we're prepared for you tonight from Odeska in Mogadishu. I wish to thank our team that made this news bulletin our success and you are lovely with you wherever you're watching us from. Have yourselves a lovely night and kindly stay put for more stories in our subsequent bulletins.